Hey everyone, Derek here from Wayscript. In this video, I want to show you how we can automate the process flow of pulling data from a MySQL database and then feeding that data to a website endpoint. We'll also password protect that endpoint so not anyone can access your data. Let's get started. Starting off, let's look at the database that we'll be using. In this example, we have a database from Amazon Web Services that we'll be using. We'll open it up using the MySQL Workbench and we'll see that we have a schema called new schema with the tables of authors and leads. Let's use the leads for this example. So let's say that we have a database that has information about leads that we need to follow up on. Let's take a look at these leads so we can see what we have. So we have a person ID, which is the unique identifier for this table. We have a last name, a first name column, follow up, and a way to contact these people. Let's say we wanted to build a tool so all of our employees could access this information, but only the necessary information, and we needed a way to password protect it. We can do this very easily using Wayscript. We'll start out by clicking on Create a New Script. We'll just call this one SQL Tutorial. Our first decision is how we want employees to be able to access that information from our database. In this example, let's create a website that they can go to. To do that, we'll click on Add Trigger and we'll go to the HTTP trigger. This creates a website endpoint that we can see here on the left. However, we don't want just anyone to be able to get that information because it's sensitive data. So let's password protect it now. To do that, we'll click on Manage Login Credentials and we'll add a credential. Let's say we have an employee login and we'll just use the password of employee. Now that we have that, we'll click off, we'll activate the trigger and go on to our next step. Next, we need to bring in our data from SQL into our workflow. So we can either click on Add Step, or we can just pull the SQL module into our workflow. At this point, there's a little bit of configuration to get into your database. You can click on Add an Account. And here, we need to put in the endpoint, the port, database name, the user, and the password. In this example, my database is hosted on AWS. So I would go to the AWS console and pull this information. My endpoint is here, so I'll take that and copy it and paste it here. My database name is called New Schema. I have a master username and also a master password. Once we put in all that information, we'll click Submit. And let's do a simple query to make sure that we have it all. So on Wastegroup, we can type SQL directly into the platform. We'll open this up to go full screen. So we'll select all from that leads table. We'll run code and we get back all that information from that database that we can now use in our workflow. A cool thing here is that we'll close out of this. Our script runs every time someone goes to this HTTP trigger, which is this website. So anytime that someone new visits that URL, we'll get up to date information from our database but we didn't want all of that information to be passed onto our website. Instead, we only wanted the information where we needed to follow up with a lead. We can do that using a simple SQL command. So let's just say where. We'll go and look at the column, which was follow up. So where follow up is equal to yes. Let's execute this again. And now we only get back the information where we need to follow up with a lead. To use this data in our workflow, we need to import it from the columns below. We'll open this up, and the only columns we need are the last name column. We need the first name column, so we'll type first name, and then we'll import contact method. This creates three new variables that we can use later on in our workflow below. We'll format those variables so they look a little bit nicer in our HTML page. We'll do this using Python, so we'll drag it into our workflow and drop it as the next step. We'll remove all of this for this tutorial. To format it, we'll just use pandas. We'll import pandas as pd. Next, we'll create a simple data frame. So we'll say pd.dataframe. We can add these variable values because they're just list values to our data frame. With data frame, we'll create the column name, first name, and then that will just be equal to the variable of our first name. What we can do is we can just drag that straight in to our workflow. We'll do the same thing with the last name. So last name. 
will be equal to that column that we imported of last name and put it there. Finally, we'll do contact will be equal to contact method. Let's see what this looks like by saying print data frame. We'll run the code and we get back a nicely formatted data frame over here. This is exactly what we wanted, so let's just pass this now to HTML. Luckily for us, we can just say data frame HTML is the data frame using a method already built into pandas to HTML and close the parentheses. Now in our Python module, we can directly output this as a new variable. We'll say outputs and our output name will be our data frame HTML and it will just equal the value in our Python script of data frame HTML. We'll run the code. Now we see that we have a new variable that we can use later on in our workflow called df underscore HTML. We'll go back to the modules. We now have an HTML table that we can pass to a website. So let's drag in an HTML module into our workflow. We'll remove the default HTML between the body. We'll open this up full screen. And now we can just drag in that default HTML into our body of our HTML module. And finally, we just need to pass that HTML as an HTTP response whenever someone goes to that URL. We have a module to do that called HTTP response, and we'll just drag it and drop it as the last step in our workflow. The response content will just be the HTML code from the previous module. And that's all we need to create to give our employees access to current information on the leads that they need to follow. Now let's go look at the web page. We'll click on the URL. We're asked for the login information, which we set as employee and employee, and we'll click login. And that's all we need for a simple table that we can use to follow up on our leads. That's password protected and automatically draws from the newest information from our database. So let's review what's happening one more time. On WayScript, we have an HTTP trigger, which gives us a URL that we can use to run our script. When someone goes to that URL, we run a search on our database and pull only the relevant information that we need. We then format it using Python. We pass it to an HTML file and then return that HTML file as an HTTPS response. As you can see, there's plenty more that you can do using WayScript, but I hope this shows you just how we can begin integrating different services together using WayScript. That's it for this one. If you have any questions on how anything works throughout this video, please let us know and we'll be happy to help you out. If you have any suggestions for future videos or want to see any new functionality, please let us know that too. Until next time.